in Acts sixteen seventeen, it says, She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. Now, there is no definite article in the Greek, so if it reads a way of salvation, it changes mm-hmm. the meaning a lot. Mike mm-hmm. did not make mention of that, but I would like to know which it is. I read the translation notes for that verse, and now don't know what to believe, the text <laughs> or the translation. Yeah, I, I, well, I would actually, to, to start off, I would actually say it doesn't change the meaning a lot, but I, I understand completely what you know, where the question is going, you know, the way of salvation or, or a way, that sort of thing, you know, <clears throat> definite or pluralistic. So it, it's an important question. Now, there are two ways to think about this. First one is sort of easy. The second one is really involved. And I, I actually have uh, some notes from Wallace's uh, Greek grammar. So if any of you are Greek geeks out there, this is going to float your boat. But the, the first one, the easy one is that the statement that, you know, quote, these men are telling you a way of salvation doesn't need to mean they're telling you one of several ways. It could mean that they're articulating a way of salvation, whereas prior to that, we sort of assumed or thought that no way existed. In other words, the good news is that there is a way of salvation, and these men know it, so listen to them. So in other words, the indefinite syntax, the absence of the article, doesn't produce or prove a pluralistic idea, despite the fact that it can be read that way. It's just not a necessary conclusion. Now, secondly, and I think, again, more exegetically, there's some Greek, you know, to, you know, bolster this this notion, you know, the, the, the short, pithy articulation I just gave you in, in the first option. Now, Wallace, Dan Wallace, if you're not familiar with him, is a very well-known Greek grammarian, probably one of the, the, the leaders in the field uh, today, teaches at Dallas. Uh, he's known for his grammar, his grammatical work and his work in textual criticism as well. Uh, his reference book is called Greek Grammar Beyond the Basics. Uh, if, if you're into Greek at all, I recommend uh, you having it. It's it's quite a quite a large book. I also recommend it in digital so you can search the thing, which is how I was able to easily find some examples that Wallace had that goes with this question. So Wallace says this on page 243. He says, it is not necessary for a noun to have the article in order for that noun to be definite. But conversely, a noun cannot be indefinite when it has the article. Thus, it may be definite without the article, and it must be definite with the article. Page 245. By definition, an articular noun is definite. An anarthrous noun, that's a noun without the article, may also be definite under certain conditions. Wallace says, as we mentioned earlier, there are at least 10 constructions in which a noun may be definite, though anarthrous. In other words, Wallace says, hey, I'm going to show you 10 constructions in Greek where nouns lack the article, but they're still definite, semantically. Okay? Now, I'm not going to, those of you who are listening can, you know, breathe a sigh of of relief. I'm not going to read all 10 of these. Uh, They start on Wallace, page 245 and follow. But I think the numbers 7 and 8 are possibly applicable to you know, what the question is really aiming at, and in particular, number eight. So here's category number seven from Wallace says, I'm, I'm just going to summarize it here. Abstract nouns don't need the article to be definite. Now, way is not, in one sense, it's not an abstract noun because a way can refer to a road, but you can see how way can be abstract semantically, way of salvation. And it's not a literal road that you walk on, okay? So it's more abstract. So that that's a possibility. But I actually think category eight is more likely the answer here. And category eight in Wallace's grammar is called or is known as Apol- Apollonius's corollary. And that is it has to do with a genitive construction. Again, if you haven't had Greek, you can tune me out now. You know, maybe go get something to eat, go get something to drink. But for those of you who've had, this is gonna be important. So it has to do with nouns in a genitive construction. Here's what Wallace says. The general rule is that both the head noun and the noun in the genitive either have the article or lack the article. This is known as Apollonius's canon or his corollary. It makes little semantic difference whether the construction is articular or anarthrous. Thus, he says, ha logos tu theu. Notice logos and theu both have articles there. He says that means the same thing as logos theu, when neither of them have the article. The corollary to this rule is developed by David Hedges, and that is 
when both nouns are anarthrous, both nouns lack the article, both will usually have the same semantic force. Now, there's a good parallel to this from Acts. If you look at Acts 7, verse 8, we have edoken autu diatheke peritomes, which translates, he gave to him the covenant of circumcision. The two nouns there are diathekein and peritomes. Neither of them have the article. You would not translate this, he gave to him a covenant of circumcision. Okay, because we know by context, there is only one specific covenant of circumcision. So even though we lack the article before diatheke, covenant, it doesn't matter. Okay, in the genitive construction, both of them lack the article. But nevertheless, the meaning there is quite definite. And you go to Acts 16, 17. What the verse says there, again, that the questioner was, was pointing to, is this whole idea of a way of salvation. They, they claim, they, they proclaim this. And so, you know, what, what's the deal here? You know, what, what's going on? You know, is, is it one way or is there a plurality here? So in that instance, we have hodon soterias. Notice both nouns, okay, both nouns lack the article, but the meaning can still be definite. The way of salvation. Why? Because salvation is definite. I mean, that's a definite thing that happens to you semantically. And so by virtue of this construction, where you have a genitive genitive uh, chain, genitive relationship here, when both nouns lack the article, the meaning can still be definite. And I think that is the best grammatical exegetical answer uh, to the question. So no, you don't have to look at this verse and worry that Acts 16, 17 teaches pluralism. There's no grammatical basis to draw that conclusion.